Yeah, I think the comments on this video are going to be pretty interesting to say the least. What's going on guys? I have been getting a very, very frequent question recently of people actually asking me to make a video talking about switching from console to PC gaming. It seems like there's a lot of interest there and since I just recently made the switch from being a console player for what? I got my first console when I was four and I'm 21 now. So basically 17 years of my life, I've been a console gamer and last September I actually got my first gaming PC and made the switch to basically being a full-time PC gamer. I barely even used my consoles. The last time I played PS4 was the two hours I played Spider man when that came out and then the last time I tried to play Xbox was when I got Red Dead Redemption 2 for it and my Xbox One X shit the bed and I had to deal with the crap heap known as Microsoft support but yeah basically ever since then I've just been playing PC it's been my main platform it's what I've been playing all my games on and honestly I have been fucking enjoying it so much it is such a great experience and I wish honestly I had bought a PC sooner so I wanted to make this video go over my thoughts on this and we're gonna break this into categories of different issues people have in whether or not they're going to make the switch to PC gaming so let's go ahead and get right into this. The only thing I care about when it comes to the price of a PC is you can spend as much money as you want or you can spend as little money as you want. Generally speaking, the more money you put into the PC, the better performance you're going to get in games and that is entirely up to you how you want to prioritize that spending and that is a great perk of PC gaming. But at the same time, I just want to direct a question to the so-called console supremacists out there who swear they will never buy a gaming PC, they'll never want to play games on a PC, gaming PCs are way too expensive compared to consoles. I just want to ask him this real quick. Do you not fucking have a computer in your house in 2019? I mean, come on. I think most people at this point have a fucking computer, whether it be a desktop or a laptop. You can get a gaming variant of each for a couple hundred dollars extra, and you have a more than capable gaming machine. And even on top of that, the extra utility that a computer provides. I mean, I hate the comparisons of people saying like, oh yeah, a $500 Xbox One X isn't really that much worse than a $500 computer, when in reality, it's a lot fucking worse, because the amount of stuff you can do on a computer adds so much more value. For instance, I can make YouTube videos on my computer, which earns me money. I can do my college work on my computer, which I cannot do on a console. So there's so much more a computer can do, and you're paying for that extra utility, which is much more valuable than anything a console can provide in comparison. So I really don't like the price comparison whatsoever. It's one of the things I can't fucking stand about the whole PC gaming versus console argument, because a computer by nature is going to allow you to do so much more than a console ever could. The general rule of thumb is if you spend more money on a computer, you're probably going to get better gaming performance. And if you buy a PC for around the same price as any console on the market, you're going to get about the same, if not better performance on most games out there. That is generally what I say when it comes to price. And honestly, I think that's about as simple as it has to be. Spend as much or as little as you would like on your computer. Guys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here, okay? Don't tell anyone because, I mean, this this may fucking blow your mind, all right? You don't have to fucking build your computer. Oh my god, I know. It's it's mind-blowing. According to the PC Master Race all over the internet, you're basically the biggest idiot on Earth if you don't build your own computer, which, I mean, you can more than do. I mean, I just didn't fucking do it because I'm lazy and I know nothing about computers. And honestly, there was a great service I used called NZXT Build, and no, this video is not fucking sponsored. They didn't pay me shit. I wish they would have because it would have been cool to get, like, a discount code or something when I ordered my $3,000 dollar fucking computer but anyway they did a way better job honestly than i probably could have done i mean the whole process was really cool i mean i could pick out each individual part i wanted from the ram sticks to cooling fans the cpu cooler the cpu itself the graphics card they had like different tiers like there was four different models of the 1080 ti i could pick from i could pick the different hard drives that went into my computer and they did all the professional cable management for me and everything so it was a really great experience and all i had to do was pay for each individual part at msrp and then a 100 dollar build fee on top of that, but in addition for that $100, I get a two-year warranty on every single individual component that went into that PC from NZXT on top of the manufacturer's warranty. So that was really fucking cool, and it's something I'm thinking like, okay, yeah, if I had walked into Best Buy and bought my GPU from there and decided to get the little Geek Squad protection plan or whatever the fuck it's called, that would have been like 100 bucks by itself, so that covers the build fee right then and there for a two-year warranty, and honestly, that's more than worth it in my mind, because... 
that's a really awesome service that they provide for a fairly low cost, plus you get that two-year warranty on everything that went into the PC, so don't listen to the fucking internet, regardless of what they tell you, you do not have to build a PC if you do not want to, it'll save you maybe a little bit of money if you can get the components on sale, but build services like NZXT Build are a pretty damn good option in my opinion. Okay, so I'll be the first to admit it, there is no doubt a learning curve when it comes to using keyboard and mouse versus controllers. I mean, I'm still trying to get used to using keyboard and mouse, that's why my fucking first person shooter gameplay sucks so badly. Yes, I'm constantly fucking reminded of it in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for that, it inspires me to do better. But the good thing is, for those who want to, you can literally plug in any controller you want. Whether it be the Switch Pro controller, the Xbox One controller, the DualShock 4 for PS4, the Xbox 360 controller, and a bunch of other third party ones. Steam has native support for all all of those and most games now on Steam have built-in controller support so it's really fucking easy. It's very console-like when you're playing with a controller. The only thing is you're going to get better graphics and performance that of course comes with PC. Also Steam has like this big picture mode or whatever that gives you a pretty console-like experience. If that's what you want from your gaming experience it allows you to use your controller to pick the games you want to play and everything like that. Navigate through your friends list, achievements, everything else like that. So there's a lot of options out there. If you want to use a controller when you're playing games you can do it. The only time I wouldn't recommend it is when you're playing for First person games. For example, that's why you guys have seen a lot of Doom gameplay in the background of my videos. That game is so fucking fun to play with keyboard and mouse. And yes, I know, I fucking suck at it. Okay, I get it. I'm not fucking good at Doom. I haven't been playing it since the fucking 1980s or 90s, whenever the fuck it released. I don't know. I'm not that old. But anyway, yeah, it's fun to play. I'm not the best with keyboard and mouse yet. But when you're playing a first person game, you are definitely going to want to play with keyboard and mouse. It is so much more satisfying than playing with a controller because it actually feels like you are in control while playing every movement is your own. You don't have aim assist and I really have enjoyed playing first person shooters on PC. It's almost like rekindled my love for that genre entirely and that's not even to mention if you're playing these games at 144 hertz it feels so good. I cannot even tell you it's the biggest leap in gaming I have ever experienced personally but yeah if you don't want to use keyboard and mouse you don't have to. Most games have controller support at this point and you can use whatever controller you want that is comfortable for you. You have the option. If there's one reason to get a PC over a console, it is definitely the frame rate. I mean, for example, Destiny 2 on Xbox or PS4 runs at 30 frames per second. And if you play it on PC at 144 frames per second and you go back to playing it on console, it literally feels like you are flipping through a fucking Microsoft PowerPoint. That is how dog shit the game feels. And I cannot stress it enough. The higher frame rate is better than any graphical upgrade in a game that I have ever seen. It just feels so good to play these first person shooters at a higher frame rate. And honestly, that's the reason why I'm enjoying playing PC so much. It's just a much more fluid experience. It looks amazing. It feels great to play. And honestly, if you're going to build a PC, definitely prioritize the frame rate over the resolution. For instance, like I built my computer around playing games at 1080p and hitting 144 hertz on max settings. That was what I wanted to do. And I mean, especially if you're strapped for money, go with the option to get like a 1080p, 144 hertz monitor versus getting like a 1440p or a 4K 60 hertz monitor. And and thank me later. Games are cheaper on PC. Yes, a lot of people will try to claim like, oh, well, PlayStation has great flash sales. No, they don't fucking compare to Steam sales or the other sites where you can get Steam keys from that have even cheaper prices than the Steam sales. For example, sites like Green Man Gaming, Fanatical, Chrono, and Humble Bundle, which are all great alternatives to get games way cheaper than Steam sometimes. Also, you have sites like G2A, which are kind of on the sketchy side, especially if you don't watch out who you're actually buying the key from. You can get ripped off a couple times. Like, I know I bought Stellaris off of G2A one time and the code actually got revoked from my Steam library. I don't know how the fuck that worked and basically I lost 30 bucks from that. So yeah, you got to be careful going to sites like that. That was the only bad experience I've had from G2A. I've bought a couple other things from them, no issue whatsoever. But yeah, you have options. You're not locked down to like the Microsoft store or the PlayStation store. You can go where you want to buy Steam keys. You can go where you want to buy Origin keys. You can go where you want to buy Uplay keys. There are options out there and of course with 
competition, it brings down the price even more, which is great for the consumer. So you have a lot more options on PC, and on top of that, you also don't have to pay 60 fucking dollars just to play the multiplayer portion of the game you already went out and paid for. Imagine fucking that. You know, you don't have Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo sitting back there saying, hey, you want to play the multiplayer for that $60 game you just went out and bought with your own money? Well, guess what? Pay up, bitch, or you're not going to access that. So yeah, it's definitely a perk of PC gaming, and you are saving money because PC game prices are much cheaper compared to PlayStation and Xbox, no matter what people claim. But with that said, I think that does it for this video. I just wanted to make this video because a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about PC gaming and a lot of questions too. Like, it's really not that big of a deal to get into it, honestly. I mean, I almost knew nothing about PC gaming and I had no problem making the jump from console to PC gaming. It's not this huge mystery like a lot of people say. I mean, let's face it, most people have a fucking computer. They know how to use it by now. And it's not really that much more different than using a normal computer. I mean, the only thing you have to worry about is like driver updates, which is as simple as opening up GeForce experience and clicking the big green update button and then maybe you have to optimize the games when you first launch it in terms of your graphical settings but most games when they launch for the first time auto adjust for your hardware and on top of that the GeForce experience app offers an optimization tool where you can like pick what you want to prioritize and everything and it'll pick the correct settings corresponding to your system specs so I mean honestly it's not hard to get into people way overblow this huge leap to PC gaming being so difficult and so much more more different than console. It is very, very simple and very easy to pick up. There's a slight learning curve when it comes to keyboard and mouse, but there's always a learning curve when you pick up a different controller anyway. It's a very simple transition and I would definitely recommend it. I am very glad that I got my PC and honestly, I couldn't be more happy that I made the decision that I did. I just wish I had gotten it sooner. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments section. Do you think console or PC gaming is better? That should stir up a shitstorm in the comments as well. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.